What's good, everybody? This is Schmitty with the final episode of Talking Schmidt for 2022. We have done it. <laughs> Tim McKinney and I will be getting together shortly after the Christmas to record the Potty Awards. And this year, we're doing things a little differently. We are going to have a poll on the Talking Schmidt website. That's talkingschmidt.com. We're going to have polls for a lot of the categories, if not all the categories, but definitely for a handful, if not more. And we are letting you, 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 the listener, vote. I love the barrier. There was a lot of people angry. I saw a lot of anger out there in the world this uh, last couple of weeks. They were talking about the skater of the year, who it should have been, who it should not have been. My guy was the guy you don't even know. Who would Jake have picked? Tyshawn Jones, sucker. Congratulations again to Tyshawn Jones. The... Thrasher Magazine Skater of the Year for 2022. Fuck yeah, dude. Keeping the fucking flame going. Anyway, Dan Jones of Salt Lake. He lost an important friend, one of his best friends and a bandmate, um, Richard Nielsen. The band was Los Rojos. And we're going to um, play a song that they recorded um, just to, you know, pay a little tribute. Did you guys know? Well, it says in the title, so it's not a surprise. This week's guest is uh, Bulky, Steve Olson, and I am hyped. I got Tony Farmer as my wingman. He's kind of the Ed McMahon this week. Wow, kids, if we had video of that, it would go viral. The executive director has just fallen out of the cart. Hashtag, are you Okay. And now the executive director of Talking Schmidt is going to introduce the program. Hey, everybody. This is Schmitty, and you're listening to Talking Schmidt. Today on the show, my skate hero, Steve fucking Olson. Happy holidays, Schmidt heads. Uh, this is Schmitty signing out once and for all and for all a good night. Steve, can you help me? No, of course. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> of course. Hey, this is Steve Olson, and you're talking. Shit. Holy cannoli! It's cool. Like tonight is the night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big dogs in. Do we really want to be here? Oh, everything changed. We on Schmitty? Talking Schmidt. Talking Schmidt, dude. <laughs> you gonna come out different? <laughs> shit, my pants, lad. The roller decks is fucking deep. Holy shit! It's right. about the one, the one, the one. <laughs> This guy thinks he's tough shit. What's up? Come on, Schmitty, what the fuck? Tell the skateboard police to come get me. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yay! Yay, Greg. <laughs> Cut that part out because next up is the one, the only, Steve Olson. He's got an iPhone 6 iPhone 6, dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mahalo. Aloha. Kamusta. Hello. Are you, are, you, are you at Shea Arto? No, I'm at the beach, bitch. Nice. Oh, is that talking shit? I mean, talking shit? Yeah. Got it. Good. Who are you talking Yeah, here. Hey. That's where I am. Woo. Uh, small kind. That's the name <laughs> <laughs> Shoots! How'd you get it all dialed in? Is this your phone? You got? We're working. That's great. Schmitty, I'm a technical genius. Okay. Fuck um, right. Anyway, together. Highbrow. Your eyebrows are fucking looking. Highbrow. Relax, Tony. I Satan am. farmer. Why you gotta be like that? Nah, I'm. I'm, I'm backing them, dude. That's a, that's a genuine compliment. They look fucking good. This is like an episode of Lost. It looks sick out there. Yeah. Well, anyway, what's going on? Not much. Thanks for taking the time, dude. I appreciate this. It's my birthday okay, tomorrow. Listen. See what I'm saying? Scorpio. 
Yeah, Scorpios for Adam. Yeah, whatever. All Scorpios are around me. Fuck, here comes the Scorpio now. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> oh, yeah. What up? R2. In the studio, baby. Fuck yeah. How are you? Good, good. We're just uh, checking into the office right now. <laughs> you know, just clocking in the card. I brought my own personal photographer, photographer to the beach. Yes, of course. Oh, my God. Dude, uh, this is a great segue because Arto shot a portrait of you that is the only portrait I've ever bought of another human being. So there you have well, it. Uh, you know what I'm going to say to the Trinity? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You don't know what to Except say? For I'm glad that you bought it from Arto. Yeah. Not that it's focus, because of me. Focus. Look at here goes Arto. Big bear boy. Okay, relax, farmer. I would make love to you though. Okay, I'm just talking Schmidt. Talking Schmidt. Let's talk Schmidt about some of the early icons. Oh, really? Yeah, let's just Torger Johnson, Bruce Logan, <laughs> Nails. I want to hear about it. Well, I mean, okay, that's cool because you're talking to the wrong guy. I didn't know Torger Johnson. But you did you look up to him or no? I mean, I don't know. I get no, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Who I mean, I don't know. I wasn't like I wasn't hip to that world. It wasn't my world. Like uh, I, I didn't know. Who, I mean, of course, I knew who Torger Johnson was, but I liked uh, what's his name, Bruce Logan's nose wheelies. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, and then and Bruce Logan's spacewalks. I mean, I'm not really. I don't know if I talk shit, but I'm going to talk like you know. <laughs> you don't have to talk like. shit. <laughs> I can. No, I know you can. <laughs> and when it's a- with a helmet on out there, what an idiot! <laughs> well, farmer, hey, yeah, 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 I'm just kidding. Farmer's still reeling from that Dodger loss, so. Oh, Take dude, I made money on that. My boy <laughs> told me. My boy told me. My boy, a Dodger fan, was like, "Oh yeah, Dodgers. They're just bored." I was like, "Well, bored or not, they're down two one, and San Diego's reeling up <laughs> fucking like momentum." He's like bullshit, and I was like, "Okay, fine, let's bet." He's like, well, anything, any amount, and I was like, "All right, two million. Fuck the Dodgers. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Look at this set. I should be going out. Oh, that looks fun. Yeah, you will. Look at that left. That poops. Yep. See what, what I tell you, Schmitty. Poop a can. Poop a can. Yeah. Yeah. Gas chambers there. Yep. Poop a can to the left. Fucking gas chambers. One of the best barrels I have in my life is at gas chambers. Oh, I end up on a rocket gas chamber. He's like, don't go left there. I was like, you're nuts. <laughs> I was going left. I ended up on a rock just floating on it. And I was like, oh, that's lame. Anyway, okay. I got, I, I want to hear Oh, no, you. no, 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 Schmidt, you can't jump in, right? Baby. I know you're <laughs> running this. Let's get back to the football. Okay. The Packers? Yeah. I've always, I've always thought the Packers are a good team. I don't know about this year. No, it's not working out so far, but you know. Yeah, but I mean, look at with Vikings are five and one. Maybe they become six and one, and then they'll go six and eight. It's on any given Sunday, you know. I mean, easy, look, you know, easy, but you know, it doesn't fucking matter. The NFL is unwatchable. It's why because it's just fucking the game's Too many going forever. It's a bunch of commercials. This is laundry, laundry, laundry. Penalty, penalty, penalty. Pass interference. Pass interference. Rough in the past. Rough in the corner. It's not even yeah. the fucking same sport that we watched when we were kids. But, it's unwatchable. I don't but, care anymore. But what about soccer? It only scores one goal if you're lucky. Like, at least they're scoring. Point made. That's what I used to think. You know, that, that, <laughs> was, my, that was my one platform nil. growing up. But the bottom line is, it's not stop fucking action. 16 to 10. Oh, man. <laughs> High scoring game. Yeah. Well, Over, nine, under. Niners are waiting for the second half to really put it together. There we go. There's that diehard guy. <laughs> there he is. And I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I like the Vikings, and I'm still just questioning when are they going to start. Mm-hmm. Lose me. It's not my friends. Like Vikes are going to the Super Bowl. I was like, Vikes aren't even going to go anywhere. Hopefully, who knows? I like Dalvin Cook, but I really like Justin Jefferson. There you have it. Oh, mm-hmm. look at Farmer. You know what? If the Packers are doing good, you'd be going nuts right now. <laughs> you have Salba on the other line. Yeah, right. Hogan, Salba, Parker, Packers, <laughs> Farmer, <laughs> everything. You'd just hey. be like, oh, fuck your Vikings. Nah, Five you know and what, one, man? son. The truth is. Another you know, set. 
Look at this sweat coming in. Okay, let's go. Let's finish this up. All right, we go. Here we go. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're gonna search your brain real quick. Okay, so Bruce Logan, I really liked. Mm. And I really liked Jay Adams at Del Mar. I thought that was insane. You ever go surfing with Jay Adams? I knew Jay Adams from surfing before I did skateboarding. Oh, okay. Yeah, he could surf too, like a maniac. Yeah, Jason has foot the footage of him in Hawaii. He's just charging these huge ass fucking waves. It's not. Yeah, he's crazy. He was crazy. Um, I got to hear this story from your point of view because Salba and Mofo both told it, and uh, you were apparently there. It's Kizar Stadium, the Sex Pistols, and Dead Kennedys, and it. Yeah, could- already, already, Smitty, you're wrong. It okay, wasn't well- the Sex Pistols. It was the Clash. The Clash, the Cramps, and the Dead Kennedys opening the show. Okay. I think and it was myself, Kevin. I'll go right to the story. Kevin right. Thatcher, myself, Mofo, Salba, Tony Alva, Brad Bowman, and some other cats that Gw- are... <laughs> Gwen Vitello. Gwen, I don't think, was there. Oh, was she there? Salba says, was- I wasn't, so I'm just relaying. <laughs> right, no, no, no. I guess I don't know. Salva said the Sex Pistols. They never played Kizar, but whatever. <laughs> he might have said, yeah, okay. But uh, either way. So the story goes something about like uh, you guys charge the stage, and possibly first stage diving or slam dancing happens at this concert. I mean, whatever. <laughs> what do you mean? We were just pogoing and having fun, and 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 pogoing off of each other if that's slam dancing that's slam dancing but mm. it wasn't like a pit or anything we were just pogoing around and it was insane i mean come on you have the cramps you have the clash you have the dead kennedys 1979 i think okay yeah everyone that didn't make the finals at winchester were at that was at that gig i think alvin and myself went to a party with Susie skates over off of uh i want to say army this huge abandoned warehouse, gigantic. But um, I remember I was sitting there and uh, I was kind of just investigating the areas and I heard these this sound and I was like, whoa, what is that? It's just like some aggressive sounds coming out of this room. So I rolled into the room and then I kind of tracked the sounds and it was coming from behind this corner. I mean, the corner, this curtain. And I pulled the curtain open and there were these two uh, two males and they were just going at it and they stopped like, you know, a deer in headlights and they looked at me and I looked at them and I was just like, ah, whatever. And then they looked and you could see a little cloud over their head, a little brain thought, oh, maybe he wants to join. <laughs> and then I closed the curtain and I walked back into the party. <laughs> they always say the first one's free, but watch out for the next million. <laughs> That's like a good fucking party. Yeah. That's 70, that's 79. It was fun though, whatever. I mean, yeah, that concert was amazing. I mean, that's a pretty good bill. Kennedy's that's cramped. That's an insane flash. bill. Yeah. Yeah, there were always good bills like that though. Mm. Were you spending a lot of time in San Francisco back then? I was because Indy was up there. Okay. And uh, I was always staying at Fausto's. Um God, where did he live at that point? He had the bicycle store at that point. I was like, oh, that's cool. Guy's a bicycle salesman. <laughs> oh, he sees that there's a profit in skateboarding. All right, let's make a stroker. All right, that doesn't work. Oh, all right. Let's make the rebound just so we can make some money. Ah, that doesn't work either. All right, here's a truck you guys should just steal from. <laughs> take a tracker and take a Bennett and then put it together and you got a good truck. Yes. All right, we'll put right. suspension on it because we're really into slalom racing. Oh, all right, pull the suspension off. Now you have fucking the best selling truck on the market. Oh. Either way, whatever. It's and, life. But that's and, the story of Indy, not Blackheart, not any of the other bullshit. All the truth just comes out. So Salvo is like Blackheart and uh, Blackheart and Olsen are one and two, and I don't know who's one, who's two, but I'm. Um, but but Salba said he was third. Salba was third? Yeah. Salba won the first bowl contest. That's all we need to know. Okay. On trackers. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what was more mind blowing, uh, Alan Gelfin's Ollie or Bobby Valdez invert? Alan Gelfin's Ollie. Mm-hmm. As far as I was concerned, I never was a big fan of the invert, but that's cool. What do you got, Tony? Hmm? Yeah, what do you got, Tony? You got in, farmer. Are you just here? I'm not really sure why I'm here. Um, moral uh, support. Uh, I mean, I think I think Schmitty was a little nervous, and then uh, he definitely wanted to hype up the the Packer Minnesota uh, Viking Purple People Eater thing. Which well, that's easy. Yeah, five <laughs> and one. What are you guys' record? Three and four. Three and three and three. Three and four now. Yeah, yeah. We're three five. and four. You're still not even five hundred. That's fucking sucks. Well, we were three and one. We've lost three on the spin now. Um, That's oh, always a hard Jets, one to do. But... I mean, dude, we lost to the fucking Jets. So yeah. we got McCaffrey. Who got McCaffrey? The Giants. Niners. The, the Giants. The Niners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. thought McCaffrey went over to the Giants and is playing baseball now. Wait a minute, they got McCaffrey. That's a great get. Yeah, I know. Well, the whole team's injured. They got their backup quarterback that nobody wanted in the off season. Look, I just love football. I just happened to grow up in Minnesota when I was a little kid. Uh, that got into my blood, so I'm Fran, I'm just doomed. Fran Tarkenton? Yep. Fran Tarkenton definitely was quarterback. And then we had uh, Alan Page, Jim Marshall, Carl hmm. Eller, you know, Farmer knows purple people. You know? uh, I remember them, yeah. I was, I was, <laughs> you weren't even I, born yet. Stop <laughs> talking. I was still, a, I was a Rams fan at the time, you know, I, I didn't. Bingo, yeah, of course, you liked Roman Gabriel. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, you know the Young Bloods and Gene Hacksaw Reynolds and you know, all those guys. And you know, we went out to what was it, Memorial Stadium? Is that what you? Have, yeah, what you yeah, and froze to death. And I remember that. Of course, uh, you know, I didn't take up full, t- full go all in with the Packers until the Rams fucked off to St. Louis. So. Right, but the Rams got a Super Bowl with Kurt Warner. Yeah, in St. Louis, fuck them. I, they were yeah, at that point. How many I, rings did, did how many rings did Brett Favre get? Two? One. He got one, right? He got one. Aaron's got one, which, you know, mm-hmm. is not enough for either of Aaron, them. Aaron only has one? One. I mean, I believe you. I'm just I'm not questioning. I'm just asking. How now, many does Joe I mean, that's, have? That's two more than a lot of people have. So uh, look at Schmitty. How many does uh, <laughs> Steve have? <laughs> how many rings does Young have after following Montana? That's pretty impressive. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, Hard but spot. see, I, I lived up <laughs> in the East Bay when they had John Brody and Gene Washington. I like the Niners. John Brody had a good arm. Lester Hayes was my dude for the Raiders. There you go. No. I like the snake. Fred Blitnikoff. Fred Blitnikoff was a madman. Yeah. <laughs> kick a field goal and throw a fucking bomb. Yeah, he, was, he, he played till he was about 50, didn't he? Yeah, he was amazing. Kind of like the Nolan Ryan of football. I mean, anyone who makes it in professional football is obviously amazing. So wow. that's insane. My friend covered something and he said all those dudes always were all every time they'd see each other, it'd be like, stay safe, bro. Stay safe. Stay safe. Mm. Don't get hurt. And I think back in the day, it was more like, all right, go kill someone. OK, here, Arto's getting away. Come on, Arto. Anyway, all right, enough of our just serving. <laughs> it's too early in the season, man. The circus hasn't come to town yet. No, it has not. That's 100% correct. I always, I always preferred the spring on the North Shore after the circus leaves. Right. But, mm. I just wanted to get out of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I don't blame you. Yeah. Switch some gears. What about early Thrasher days? Tell me how it went down. Did Dwayne get the name? How did how did Thrasher start? Dwayne? What do you remember? That's what I heard. Who the fuck gives Dwayne credit for anything? <laughs> Not me. Dwayne. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. What do you mean he got the name? I think KT was the one who came up with the name, to be honest. Oh, mm. uh, just a bunch of Thrashers. She was like, oh, that's amazing. Okay. I mean, that's what I remember is KT. I mean, I was roommates with them. Yeah. Yeah. So there's Swinson. I mean, I thought I always thought the Thrasher was those guys trying to save their uh, uh, the possibility of being able to sell stuff still and make their own magazine or their own publication just so they could get rid of stuff that they had. 
But that's capitalism at its finest. Because then what happened? Transworld came up and Tracker was like, yo, we can sell trucks too. How'd they do? I mean, well, one's still going. One is, uh, what, is it even online? I mean, Transworld and is Tracker around? Tracker's definitely around. Okay. I mean, everything comes back to Novak. I don't know. Uh, the truth of the matter is, Novak made every of these things happen for those cats. Financially? Yeah, fine. Well, I mean, without any money, I don't think you're really able to do shit, right? But the brainchild was more Eric and Fausto. Is that right? Um, well, in which sense? Like then, who, uh, who who was thinking up and putting in the like actual grind? Like was was Novak more monetary, just providing money for it to happen? And these guys were in the trenches doing it. I mean, every fucking uh, early skate contest video I watch, Fausto's in the background. He's there. Right. So like that to me was really impressive, like that he was he wasn't yeah, but just those this dudes were always at the skate contest once they got involved. Uh huh. I mean, from new work on, they were there. They were covering their like investments. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I wasn't really part of the whole ramp jam because I was more into Randy Savage. But um, <laughs> well, no, yeah. um, no. But the, yeah, those guys were there. They were doing it. I mean, Swinson was definitely down in the trenches making a doing all the production work. I'm sure Fausto was too, but Matt Fausto seemed to be more of the, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, the mouthpiece or the front man. And they both did a great job. But I mean, you know, it all comes back to like who put up the money to make it possible for those dudes. And that was Novak. Right. And that was Road Rider Wheels. Wasn't okay. like he was bored doing so great then. Well, the mag started out on like big paper with ink coming off on your fingers and the whole deal. I mean, it was way different back then. Yeah, but you know what worked best on Thrasher back then? Play Doh. <laughs> no, silly play. Silly, <laughs> silly play. Silly play. Silly My bad, not Play Doh. Ah, uh, yeah. Kids don't know about Silly Buddy. Uh, no, no. no, they know about one thing, one thing only. Take a dog. Oh, we, are, do we lose the iPhone 6? <laughs> the iPhone 6 just fell into the sand. I said my phone <laughs> fell. There, there you are. are. Boom. Sorry, you guys. Sorry. Technically challenged. Oh, Stevie, when, when did you first start surfing in Hawaii? Just raining. 1972. Whoa. Ooh. How'd you have how'd the Hawaii hookup? I think I was 11. What? How'd you, how'd you end up going to Hawaii? Uh, because my mom was a, was a stewardess for American Airlines, and then he, she stopped, but she always got uh, tickets. So they always said, oh, where do you guys want to go for Christmas vacation or summer vacation? So we always were into surfing, and we went to Hawaii. Where's the best place you've been outside of Hawaii for surf? Uh, I think Bali. Oh, shit. You been there, uh, Farmer? A lot of laughs. Uh, no, I had a ticket once. I had to cancel it because of work. I was just heading out. Heading out oh, and, really? Yeah, never been. So anyway, yeah, Thrasher was Thrasher. Well, what about the Stropel cover? Was it as big of a drama situation as some people have said? Or like, wh what do what, you mean? Like, what does oh, that even mean? It's a drama situation. Come on, you <laughs> don't act like you don't know this shit. It's like, have, you so, know what? See, so, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, Cal Guy is the first guy on a NorCal magazine. And why isn't Novak's dudes, you know, like there was tons of dudes uh, already under their wing and they picked this guy, Stropel, out of SoCal. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. I just, I've heard like it's like Giants Dodger type shit. Can you see the rainbow? Whoa. Ooh, yeah. All right, we're back to Stropo. I used that bad word. I don't know. I don't even remember Stropo cover. He's doing uh -huh. front side grind. Uh huh. Funky front side grind too. No. Yep. Uh, what do you think, Farmer? I tell you what, I, I never had that issue. That, that's for damn sure. What I, I was, I was fucking clue when when Thrasher first happened. I was so fucking out of it. I didn't know what was going on. I was still looking for action now. 
Back you were dating uh, that chick that became a movie star, right? No, no, no. Come on. No. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the one that had the shit in her hair. First, first thra- the first thrasher is what, 80, 81? Yeah. yeah. Who, did the, who did that illustration? KT, no. KT. KT did not draw that fucking. He can draw? Yeah, the first one was fucking KT, and then the next one was Stropel, like right in front of a ladder doing a front side grind in a pool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With yellow. Yellow, yeah. Red. Hey, things. what do you know? Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. You know, but Caster, all this shit, there was beef, right? Or was there no beef? I don't know. There's never any beef with people from SoCal, but uh, NorCal was always flippy. Really? So there wasn't like the Dogtown versus the Inland crew, like Salva versus Alva or some shit? I mean, uh, not Cause, really. Because this Dogtown movie was more, I think that was more manufactured, to be honest. That's what I was wondering. Okay. The only, so the only it seemed like beef, that. The only real beef that mattered was, 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 was over surfing. Was if you're if you were from the valley like me and you went to the fucking beach and then you got your fucking tires slashed. That's just the way it went. Mm. That was the beef. Was the fucking it was the uh, surf locals at the beach and the vals. Like Stay myself. home. Yeah, go home. Yeah, skating. Well, I don't know. Cares. Locals are locals. I mean, locals are they, they still exist, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they suck. Okay, yeah. unless, you know. unless your buddies with them. Yeah, well, I mean, locals are locals. I mean, they have a right to protect what they've got. How how is how is Arto slid in there on the North Shore? Is he has he been um, accepted? Dude, it's Arto <laughs> sorry. Are you kidding me? I know, but it, a, sur- a surfer on the North Shore doesn't give a fuck about a know. skateboarder from Finland, right? Um, well. Yeah, I mean, he just surfs and he takes his pictures and he raises his family, and it seems like it's pretty copacetic. Cool. I don't think it was. It's quite as heavy as it used to be, but no. I could be wrong. I mean, it's kind of cool over here. It's real cool. That's cool. yeah. I love it. It's great. Yeah, awesome. it's beautiful. Could you live there though? Would you get like island fever? I think I. Uh, yeah, but you, then you can just bounce and go and come back. That's what Chris Sen was like, dude. You can just go to another island. It's just a hundred bucks or something. Like that. <laughs> <It's> so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, Chris is in. Uh, <laughs> Chris is on the big island, right? Yeah, Dakota. he's at Kona. I saw somewhere that you said never call that you were never the Sodi. Who said that? I wasn't. That was you that were, wasn't. You were skater good. of the that's year, not, but not that's Sodi. That's not what it was not anything to do with Thrasher. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What was it? Yeah. 78? So Sodi was uh Sodi was, so was Sodi. Thrasher it trademark Sodi? Skateboarder of the year, so it wasn't the, the, the readers, the readers poll, right? The readers poll. Yeah. Yes, I was just with Greg Weaver and Darren Howe, <laughs> and uh, I think Weaver had brought some issue with the actual readers poll uh, thing that you you know fill in. Some guy Jack Smith told me one time. He said, "Oh, you know what? Santa Cruz bought that for you." And I was like, "That's cool." How much you think they spent on that? <laughs> like. Man, it's like the the opinions and the shit is gnar though. Like Alva was pissed, thought he should get it. Is from what I heard. Well, Alva's always all right. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? I didn't even think I made the top ten. I was like, wow, that's wild. Do you still have the little? What did they give you a trophy? Yeah, I have. It's the best trophy ever. It's on top yeah. of his refrigerator. It's only because my kid put a, a little G.I. Joe action mask on this trophy, though. <laughs> yep, yep. I've held it. it really is, it's, a, it's a great trophy now. Before uh. that, it was lame. <laughs> but with the action figure, it looks like, you know, he's like, you know, doing a weird little front side turn with, uh, in the apocalypse. Yeah, that's good. I yeah. guess. I don't know. Trying to make uh, pauses out of this. When's the last time you talked to Alex? Uh, yesterday. He's doing good. Yeah. Oh, he's having a baby. Oh shit. Yeah. So now I'm a grandpa. <laughs> he's not actually having. <laughs> he's he's not. not having the baby. His chick is having baby. Obviously, Tony. Yeah. I'm gonna take my <clears throat> shirt off. Send suntan now. Oh damn. Not really. <laughs> um. So anyway, 
skateboarding was skateboarding. Skateboarding is still kind of the same in its own way, right? I it's don't know. The it's question- bigger, but it's still, uh, look at the essence of skateboarding is still skateboarding. Absolutely. I don't know if the reasons to skateboard are, but the actual activity is. Yeah, the thing I get caught up in is the attitude and the things that kind of drew us to it versus where that is now. And, you know, all the different shit that's happening and stuff like that, where it's like, wait, you can't be punk rock anymore? Like, is that right? You can do whatever you want. You can be punk rock back then. Then all of a sudden you could be punk rock. It's the same. It's opened up, I thought. I don't know. Skateboarding is pretty insane. In fact, right. those kids are making so much dough. Some of them is pretty impressive, too. They're kind of like magicians with their footwork and their board control, I think. How many Thrasher covers did you get, Stevie? I never. <laughs> never? Never. I never got an interview. I never got anything. Is that, is that real? I wasn't well-liked at Thrasher because I always told them they were full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's all right. I got other covers. What was your relationship like with Fausto and Swanson? At first, it was great. Then they started making money, and then they became pricks. And it's just like, you guys are fucked. <laughs> that was my opinion. I remember Fausto had some Saudi award saying, he's like, who allowed this homeless guy in here? I was just like, oh, wow. i <laughs> fuck you up right now, here and there. And he's like, don't be so serious. I was like, don't, you know, I won't be serious. I'll be serious when I'm picking you up off the ground. <laughs> and Swinton, yeah, they became weirdos. I'm sorry. They were really quite fun. They were like good friends of mine. And then all of a sudden they started doing their thing. And then they were like, oh, yeah, we're the he- we're the head honchos in skateboarding. Hmm. Well, don't worry. I can see your spots, Leopard. But whatever. They did what they did. They did great. I mean, they could definitely help skateboarding come back. Or was it the skateboarders? Do you think do you think uh Jason told me that you might be you might be the last person that ever talked to Fausto? I was the last person to talk to Fausto. From what I was told by Tony. I was in New Mexico. You were talking to him when he was on his bike ride? Uh I was talking to him right before he went on his bike ride. Okay. Cuz I was going to do something with him back then. And then he uh I called him or whatever and he's like, "How'd you do?" I was like, "Oh, I DQ'd. I missed the cone, but I was like a half second faster than those cats on the split and then uh i blew it he's like ah it doesn't matter fuck it you're the only old guy that could sell product anyway (laughs) then uh an hour later i was at some pool uh robert palmer's pool and uh mofo's mofo started crying and we were like yo what's up and he's like fausto died like dude that's insane i just talked to the guy an hour ago (laughs) <laughs> like, no, I'm telling you, da, da, da. and then all of a sudden I get a call from Fausto's phone and I'm like, he's calling me right now. And it was Tony. He was like, oh, you're the last guy I talked to my dad. And I was like, oh, what? are you serious? That was sad. Oh, that was yeah, that's heavy. God damn. Yeah, that was fucked up. But I guess he went out quick, though. Uh huh. He was with Dr. Lynn, right? Yeah, I heard the doctor. Well, him and Dr. Lynn were on their bike ride. And then all of a sudden, before he even hit the ground, he was done. Mm. Supposedly. I don't know. I said drag. I don't, I, you know, I really like Fausto. It must have been heavy up there. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's. And I was feeling for Sally and Tony and Gwen. Mm. You know. But we used to go up occasionally, Sessick and myself, I think even Novak. And have these like kind of pep rally talks with Swinson and go to lunch or something. And um, that was like, he was like, oh, how can you be so happy? Olsen, you have nothing. I was like, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I have nothing. (laughs) That's where you're all fucked up in the head anyway, pal. Mm. And then, then Joey Trache calls me. I think I was, I was in New York and, um, I was at someone's house and I was like, oh, I got to split. I'm going to go for a walk. Because it was kind of weird. It wasn't kind of weird. It was fucking definitely weird. And uh, as I'm walking, I make a, I think I'm on Church Street and I make a left onto Broadway. And who do I fucking run into but Stessic? Whoa. Yeah, it was very fucking bizarre. 
I, and he was like, yo, and I was like, yeah, can you believe it? And he's like, no, it's weird. And then we went to uh, some bar and I got drunk. The call. Do you think uh, Stesic is responsible for kind of the, the tone that Thrasher's used throughout the years, like from MoFo to KT to Jake? Like, was it all originated with Stesic, the writing? I mean, maybe influential, uh-huh. definitely. I guess is, that's the same thing. Yeah, he was a major influence, right? Yeah, I mean, I remember... Uh, I remember Novak was telling me a story, which you can take with a grain of salt, but he's like, oh, I, I, I gave, uh, I gave Mofo a Hunter Thompson book and, uh, told him this is a good, this guy writes in a good style. Uh, try to get influenced by him. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Mo- Mo- Obviously Mo- that didn't happen. <laughs> 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 Mofo told me that same story. I feel yeah, like Mofo has his own writing style. It's like, all right, take from what you can take from, but develop your own shit. Mm. Copycats never prosper. What are well, they, that, they, that's they, not they, a very true good, good, good artists borrow and great artists steal, right? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you got a million stories about probably uh, the the runways and the, the photo shoots and stuff. Is there one that you haven't like got sick of telling? Like the photo of you with the girl and you're like holding her from behind and it's like down the middle of, I don't know, are you in Manhattan or somewhere? It's like Fifth high- Avenue, 5th to 35th Street, shot by Ivory Sarah. Thank you. I've No, that was just a picture that we did. Mm-hmm. There was nothing about that. Who was the who was the bird? Um, Fuck, I don't even know. Arto going left. Phew. Yeah, big dog. Huge bottom turn, still in the soup. He's going to be pissed. I didn't shoot one photo. Uh-oh, he's coming inside. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Just put the camera on a tripod. He's coming all the just... way in. <laughs> oh, Sody coming in. We got Skater of the Year no. and Sody. <laughs> he got Sody? Yeah. Fuck yes. He was, I, you know what? I have a story of Arto Sari and Jeff Frawley. Oh, good. Back in the day, whenever it was, I don't know, but. My kid and his friends were like, oh, yeah, we're into skating. And I was like, okay, cool. We're going on a skate trip. So we went to San Francisco. And I, they wanted to see EMP, EMB. Uh-huh. And uh, so we're sitting there. And I see these two older guys. They weren't that much older, but they're much older than my kids. And um, it was Raleigh and uh, Arto. And I, obviously, as a dad, you don't really care. I went up to him. I was like, what are you guys doing? You know, uh, we're checking out this hand grab, mate. I was like, oh, sick, do it. And they're like, eh, not so fast. And I was like, all right. You think in like five minutes you're going to do it? Yeah, like, I don't know. Arco, <laughs> he didn't, I don't think he really spoke English at the time. Didn't say anything. Here comes the left again. And uh, <laughs> then I was like, all right, they're not going to do it. We're out of here. It's an exciting story. <laughs> I didn't get one photo. I should have got that left over it. Yeah, it, I've seen like 10 lefts, like almost wanting to throw my phone in the water and jump in and get bored. Where are you going? OK, done. So you guys, <laughs> I don't speak Finnish, so. I was waiting but. for it to ter- turn into something else that it's not. That's no, it didn't yet. turn into It didn't go nowhere. Where, what, was, what do you think is one of the gnarliest things you've been there for that's happened on a skateboard? Wow. Uh, I, I love the Dave Hackett loop story, by the way. Salva told me that, and I was I never heard that one. What do you mean? He showed up at Tony Hawk's loop or something. Oh, okay. Like- I'll tell you the story. Salva <laughs> wasn't there. <laughs> okay. you know, all this hearsay is hype. Bullshit. <laughs> We're sitting there. Lance says, I'm going to go try the loop. Do you want to go? And I was like, oh, I fucking love to go. So go to Lance. Then we go by Grosso and, and Grosso gets his car and <clears throat> we're driving down there and we get like, I don't know, 15 minutes outside of this and Hackett calls me <laughs> and I'm like, what's up, David? And Lance is like, like you can see him just cringing. <laughs> like, 
no, 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 no. It's just a, it's a private session. And I, I'm like, yeah, I got to call you back. And I was like, yo, Lance, if, if it was you calling me, I would like invite you as well. Anyway, so then uh, Lance is like, oh, God, OK, whatever. And I'm like, I mean, dude, it's one of my best friends. You're one of my best friends. I would just be like, yo, we're going to go there. So uh, I call Hackett back and Lance is uh, reluctantly said, OK, you can ask him if he wants to come. And I say, yo, David, I'm going to go do that loop at, at Tony Hawk's. He has it set up. And Hack is like, no, oh, I can't do it. I got to go to, uh, I got to, I got to go to Arizona. I was like, what do you mean you got to go to Arizona? It's the loop. It's not up all the time. What are you kidding me? And Lance is just like, I can't believe you're actually trying to convince him to come. <laughs> and I'm still, and I'm just thinking, all right, 70s versus the 80s. Uh, so like, I need another 70s dude there. <laughs> And I, I keep saying, oh, I can't believe you. You're such a pussy, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, I, I just can't swing. I go to Arizona. Blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, he's like, okay, maybe I'll roll by. So I was like, okay, I'll send you the address. So then he says, okay, whatever, we'll show up. So we get to the ramp, the, where we'll get to Tony's warehouse thing, and the loop is up. And uh, they have the pads. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Those pads are super fun to jump in. And they like start dropping them from halfway on the uh, the rolling thing, whatever mm. the ramp. I'm like, why are you guys dropping in from there? Let's start from the top. And they're like, no, 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 no. You know, we've been trying this a couple of times. You got to do this, that, and the other. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then all of a sudden, package shows up with his uh, G bag, and he's playing Ted Nugent. And he walks in and he looks at it and he's like, oh, I own this. <laughs> and he's like, why are you dropping in from there? And I was like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Just trying to be, I'm not trying to cause any bad vibes. And then next thing you know, they're doing it, they're doing it. And I see Lance sits down and he's like, he's pissed. He's like, oh, here's this guy he's with his Ted Nugent and Aerosmith. <laughs> And him and Grosso start session. I see Lance is sitting over there pissed. So I'm like, oh, this is lame. Now I have this guy pissed and the other loud mouth is rolling. I went outside and then all of a sudden Eric Dressen called me up. I was like, yo, come on down, dude. We're having a session at the at the loop. I smoked about 10 cigarettes. And I came back in and now these dudes are down to like maybe two pads. And I'm like, oh, fuck. What is this all about? All of a sudden, they take it to one pad, and they're both kind of rolling around and just running into the pad on the uh, on the exit. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Pull the pad, bitch. You got this. And Hackett goes, and he's like, you think so? I was like, what do you mean do I think so? I know for a fact, bitch. I'm watching you. <laughs> Every time you go around, all you have to do is fucking roll out. It's, you got it. And Grasso is getting close and close, and then all of a sudden, they pull the bag and hack it fucking does the loop but he kind of spins out at the bottom and slides around he's like fuck i made it it's like bitch you didn't ride away you're full of shit so then he read it again and he wrote out and it was like wow that's incredible so this dude shows up last makes it first and they're like oh that's cool daniel Sturt was there that's cool that's cool all of a sudden brasso makes it like he cured fucking cancer <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is this is insane <laughs> this guy shows up never has tried it makes it then this guy who's been trying it for a couple of different fucking sessions makes it and it's like he fucking just came across and fucking came up with some fucking amazing life-saving thing i was like this is horseshit <laughs> then i was like fuck that i'm fucking going now i started going 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 coming around coming around i was like oh i'm gonna make this fucking loop in a heartbeat and they're like all right, session's done. We got to we, we gotta lock up. And I was like, oh, that's fucking jive. So I didn't get to make it. Whoa. Lance didn't get to make Lance could have made it, too. He had it for huh. sure. I yeah, but it. those guys made it, and we didn't. I didn't fucking get to my second real. I didn't get a real shot. But I'm ready to go do it right now. Let's go back. Yo, I'm fucking going to. Hacker was like, I don't know this guy to ever do the loop. I just think that was 20 years ago. Now I'm going to do it at 61. Son, who owns it now, my man? <laughs> oh, good yeah, luck man. to you. Good riddance, <laughs> youngster. No, but it was awesome. It was amazing. I, that was a pretty fucking sick thing. That's 
That's not. But a... that's the real story behind it. But uh-huh. the fact of having to convince him to come and Lance just getting like, just like, oh my God, would you just stop? He doesn't want to go. Just like, let it be. Like, come on. What is wrong with you? Get on it. I'll see you down there. <laughs> it was so funny. So, anyway, 70s first, 82nd. Well, I, I want to hear you talk uh, uh, while Farmer's in the room about this great American band thing, because far, far, oh, Farmer says Aerosmith, and I I, I don't know. You're not back. Greatest Aerosmith, American right? band? Yeah. I mean, that can go any which way, but I I will always say that Creedence Clearwater was pretty good, too. Wow. Creedence uh, yeah, Clearwater. Yeah, you know, I'll give you that. They're, they're in the No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying greatest, because I think that's, yeah, that's kind on. of a... Uh, that's kind of a, a big title for how many great bands there were. But I just watched a Creedence um, documentary and I had forgotten about them. I mm. not, hadn't forgot about them, but just kind of weren't on the radar. But the documentary showed how amazingly like prolific they were and how many hits they had back then. Yeah. And during that time, they were like playing kind of straightforward rock and roll blues type of based music. While those other cats were getting a little more psychedelic. I don't know. It was impressive. And I remembered I was having a conversation with Dante Ross, and we were like, Uh, Bands have, whatchamacallit, albums that are just hit based. And it was like The Pretenders, Diva. I mean, it just kept going. But, you know, and then I, I was like, wow, Credence had like hits upon hits upon hits upon hits. They were making albums in two days. And John Fogarty, I guess, was like, you know, kind of like a drill sergeant. Anyway, mm. Creedence is good. Aerosmith rocks. I love the Ramones. I mean, you know, Devo is pretty amazing. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. But is that a rock and roll or is that different types of genres? Okay. Devo, so why aren't they a rock band? band? I never no, said they're they kind of more band. new wave tech. They had a little more tech thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. For my for yeah. my money, it's just Aerosmith isn't who I want representing me when I. That's not who I can't back it. It's like they. Well, they took, right. it's just they, it's just that. See, the thing is, look, Credence, they broke up, so they they weren't around long enough to to go fucking cheese. The problem with Aerosmith is they okay. went fucking that's cheese. Right. They have all this whole like late cheese catalog that I understand. Look, I understand the argument that it, that perhaps that they get disqualified. For all the cheese. Who? Aerosmith? Yeah. You mean like Come on. Uh, well, what about Van dude Halen? Looks, dude, Are they in dude there? looks like a lady. Van Halen's great too. Absolutely. Van Halen's definitely in the conversation. Van Halen but gets eliminated American, because of We're Hagar? talking American rock band, right? Yeah. The, the Van the Halen's American. American rock roll band. I'm saying who is the Maybe American? Nobody said stone? they weren't. Nobody said Van Halen wasn't, babe. <laughs> don't I mean, get don't get two octaves higher on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> buddy. There's, nobody was disagreeing either. We're just hey, there's no law, there's farmer, no right answer. Okay. Farmer's still thing, going it's, Aerosmith. It's a fun thing for me to get agitated about at the bar. Well, who right. influenced more bands too, though? Is that going to the conversation? It's part of the equation, no. But it's not the like ball. Aerosmith didn't really like they just took what Led Zeppelin was doing and did it a little bit different, right? But like the Ramones were the Ramones, Devo was Devo, Bad yeah, Brains but I was mean, Bad look Brains. Look at Aerosmith and the whole hair metal thing. They kind of got that whole scene to so, another point. So, don't, don't so tell me Guns N' Roses was influenced by Aerosmith. Roses. Okay. Oh, Guns N' Roses are definitely influenced by Aerosmith. Mm-hmm. All right. I would think. I would think Slash like Joe Perry more than he did Johnny Ramone. Yeah, you're yeah, more technical. That's true. Well, but, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but when was the last time you were playing music, Steve? Uh night before I left to come here. With uh anybody or just noodling I'm in your just house? a solo artist, uh Schmitty. Okay. <laughs> what? No, I just like to fuck around. Talk a little bit about the Joneses, though. Yeah. What was like one what about of the, the Joneses? What was like a highlight? Like, did you? Oh, let's it? talk about skate rock. Let's get Let, that yeah, story. Let, let's talk about. Let's do it. It's getting please. better and better. Okay. Oh, you do. Oh, you got to go do that. All right. Um. I got to go back to the house. Okay. 
Can I call you back in two minutes? Yeah. Do that okay, when bye. you get back then? Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. And now, another first impression with Tony Douglas Farmer. Okay, here we go again. Uh, this is Tony Farmer with another first impression regarding the one and only Steve Olson. And uh, I'm going to try and bang this bang out too quickly because um, it, and, and neither one of which did I actually meet him. But uh, they stand out in my memory more than meeting him. So I can't remember meeting him. But if I go way, way back to uh, Brad Zerbel's garage and discovering that he had this, um, that Santa Cruz, the black one with the uh, sort of that square graphic with the with the diagonal and the blue and the red the steve Ol- and i'm and i remember thinking fuck man i want this board so badly and and my buddy brad he he didn't really skate and i was i was skating and so uh i sort of uh i guess you could say i stole it i wish i still had it i don't but um that was the second board i think i stole from brad i know the first one being a GT Coyote 2. Anyway, um, that really stands out. I love that board. And then years and years later, uh, shoots, it must have been 2001 or two. at, uh, this was, it was in New York. Jocko Whalen had had a, uh, um, a book reading for The Answer Is Never at Pete's Candy Store. And then I believe we ended up at Sweetwater afterwards. And there he was. He was there, man. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then, and, uh, buddy uh cohen nichols was uh was chatting with him and rambling on and you know being buddy and i'm thinking all right here it comes here comes the intro it's let's let's have it okay just standing there with my you know my dick out going all right i'm waiting i'm right here bud let's have it nothing nothing fucking Steve walked away, fucking Bud went off and hobnobbed with someone else, and I'm going, all right, well, that didn't happen. Uh, I called him out on it later, and, and look, understandably, he, he was like, what, what, you don't know him? You know, yeah, right, because, you know, California and all that, you'd, you'd think I, I'd have known him, but I, I didn't, and uh, it, it wasn't long after that that I, I started seeing him more and more in New York, and uh, we've gotten to be pals, and, um, but, yeah, first, uh, first impressions of him or not meeting him. But I guess maybe First Impressions doesn't have to be meeting him. I don't know. Anyway, there you have it. Head on down to your local shop. Ask NerdWizard Skateboards. Or visit NerdWizard.com for all your pondering needs. Tickety tack. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden, and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Shirt off. No no AC out there, huh? Okay, whatever, Schmitty. Cold the summer I spent was in San Francisco. Mark Twain, go. <laughs> no, it's right go there. No? Is that right, Tony? It is. Yeah, that's, it's that's right. San Francisco is uh, hey, oh, the summer that freezing that to death. Chess piece. Chess piece. Woo. <laughs> what did you cover up with that? What did I cover up? What? It's not a cover up. It's not? No. Oh, I thought you had something else there before. No. That, no, no. I that, almost, and, and, and I nearly th- threw something over this in a, in a flight of fancy. That, ago, that's but, not the Santa Cruz logo to the to the left of it, that little circle, that one Kendall designed. Uh, Is that uh, it? <laughs> it just says thirteen. It says thirteen. Oh, you mean you mean the Santa Cruz not? <laughs> yeah. Kendall didn't dev- Kendall didn't do that one. Kendall did- they paid they paid a marketing firm uh half a million dollars to come up with the knot because the dot was uh what needed changing. <laughs> okay. The dot. Uh, who came up with your checkerboard? Uh, my brother and I did. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my brother did that, not Jim Phillips. Right. And the, 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 uh, they, we did another one. And Does then Jim... they did their own version. It was just like, yeah, of course. And the fucking third one is just so stupid. Oh, uh, so he did like the you third one? See, you can see the difference. No, my brother didn't touch the third one. Phillips did the third one. Okay. 
<laughs> and my brother did all the SOS stuff, but Phillips did the lettering now. He just kind of ripped off the Alva logo. <clears throat> and then did that go to Vans? Like, did the Vans checkerboard come out after, yeah? Uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, 100%. There was a cat that used to run Vans. Well, it was the Vans team manager, Everett Rosecrans. He's like, hey, man, you know, we can we can make custom shoes. And I was like, oh, sick. Here, here's some gold lame. Here's some checkerboard. And here's some black leather. And I wish I kept those checkerboards because it was long before their checkerboard came out. Uh, it was sad. I threw them away because I didn't like million dollar shoes floating in the bottom of a fucking junkyard. Story Land are you? You're not much of a story hoarder, of my life. Right? Story. Wait, wait. Yeah. Let's go back to farmers' comments. Story of my life. Probably. Social. I mean, social oh, hey, hey. Well, I'm just gonna go with that one. Social D. Uh, Greatest rock and roll band of America. Wow, social really? D. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Social D. I, I think they have a load of good songs, and mm. you know, I like later. Social they had. D. They had. I don't know. If we're talking punk bands, Black Flags ahead of Social D, Ramones are ahead of Social D. <laughs> They're definitely ahead of Black Flag too, but whatever. Bad brains. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to go down. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to talk about skate rock. Is, is skate, oh, rock, yeah, punk skate rock? rock? Is skate rock supposed to be punk rock? Well, skate rock is whatever. That's just another moniker to fucking maybe possibly like sell some tapes. Right. No? It's coming up, according to MoFo, next year's 40 year anniversary. Of skate rock, skate rock. Skate I was rock brought to you by Thrasher Magazine. How yeah. many years of this month? Oh, we moved twenty. Oh, all right, we were on the up. All right, what did we do this month? Two hundred. All right. Oh, we did four thousand. Great. What's this moniker? Make a T-shirt. All right. <laughs> we're in fuck catalog. Sell, sell, sell. It's almost like fucking Glenn Gary Gunn and Ross. Always be closing. <laughs> <laughs> No, anyway, all right. I mean, you you know, you make me talk about things that I can't actually talk mad shit about. Uh, big boys oh, versus JFA. Rock, no, versus... I, I, I played in a band back in the like late seventies called the Hoods, H O O D S, with uh. Ron Emery from TS to Well, this other dude, Brian Wassman, one of the best punk rock drummers ever. Could never play the same thing twice. Some dude, Paul Bashir. And uh, our first gig, I think, was Lakewood Skate Park. And so skate rock was invented then, not later. There it is. Wow. Yeah. Bottom line. It's the truth. It's not really any lies going on, but I have a couple of guys that skated in the band. Actually, the dude, the drummer, used to fucking ride loose ball bearing wheels. He told me much later on in life that he was into doing like, you know, daffies and handstands. <laughs> <laughs> Out. I was like, it's a good thing you didn't tell us that then because we kicked you out of the band. <laughs> what do you think with the direction it went with the the modern just travel around the world shit with all the bands and stuff? That's a little bit more than what was going on then. No, that's totally great. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. It's cool. Do what you got to do to keep moving and making the people hear your stuff. Yeah. Do you guys like uh, your thing? You're a thing? Oh, the band? Yeah. Ca Cavs yep. band? No. Yep. Nope. <laughs> just checking. I, I'm, I'm I just, I, 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 I'm unfamiliar. That's a good stance to take. I never heard of them. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, you do. Anyway, so that's the, that's the history of skate rock. That and is. I think they were, Dwayne had a band called, uh, I don't know, Floaty Fuck Dolls or something. Hmm. He's a fucking follower. He wasn't a herder. There it is. What? Yeah, have you have you seen some of what's going on with Dwayne these days? I saw him. He's cool. Yeah. I guess I don't know. I have other things to do, like get my pirate look together for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii is a good place for fucking Halloween. Yes. Uh, what else do we got? Oh. Farmer had a good one. We were talking about uh, the the fucking Pearl Jam video. Oh, that was amazing. But we yeah. had tell the story about that one. So some broad I know is uh, she said, "Oh, this cat's doing this video. This band out of Seattle that 
you're gonna do a video of and they need someone to play a crazy guy a crazy homeless guy <laughs> and uh do you want to do it and i was like how much and they said and i was like you know double that blah 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 and she said, i don't think they could have that in the budget and i was like whatever then let them go get a homeless guy so anyway, then I was saying I was living down. I wasn't, I don't think I was living downtown. It was like early call time, whatever. So I they like, I'll bring some selections of like whatever clothes you have. So I threw a couple of things into uh, a couple bags, like plastic bags. So then I rolled over to Griffith Park and park and I'm walking over towards wherever the fucking production setup is. And uh, this dude walks up to me and he's like, hey, man, I'm like, hey, hey what's going on? It's like, damn, it's early, right? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of early. <laughs> like, oh, you know, we got some coffee and some donuts and stuff over here. Uh, you know, I know what it's like. And I was like thinking, yeah, it's fucking early. I need some coffee. You're right. And he's like, yeah, he's, I lived in my car for a while. It's like, yeah, so I have to. It's like, yeah, it's a bitch keep walking and he's just babbling whatever yeah you know <laughs> this problem will get fixed one day you know the next thing you know get there and he's like here help yourself some do donuts and some coffee or bagels or whatever and i'm like you think i'm homeless <laughs> he's like yeah help yourself it's cool don't worry i was like yo i'm fucking here to play the homeless guy <laughs> uh, it's early i mean what, what do you want i i just just parked my car over here i'm not sleeping in it he's like oh whoa man and i was like what are you a pa or something he's like i'm the singer for the band i was like great <laughs> anyway clueless one i'm gonna get some coffee and i'm gonna go and do whatever it has to do and let's get this done as quick as possible and that's my Pearl Jam story. But I have a better Pearl Jam story than that. Yeah? Yeah. I have a couple of Pearl Jam stories, which are quite funny. But I'll share maybe one or two with you. Okay. Because that one was whatever. That one was just funny. I mean, Eddie had just made a mistake. I thought I was some homeless guy. And I thought, oh, well, I'm not. That was but early, right? Or early Pearl that Jam. Was before they broke. It was yeah. for that freedom, whatever. Okay. What's his song? They didn't go with, they were like, oh, no, we're not going to go with, like, some story video thing. And we're going with live performance. Even flow, that was what it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, and then the next song that hit was the, the little story one about the kid. Yeah, Jeremy. Chuck, Jeremy. Oh, and Chucky, Jeremy, whatever. Anyway, yeah. Um, hey, wait, so that, but that day, did, did you meet, was that... Did you get to talking to Jeff at all that day? Because I'm, I'm gonna... to meet Jeff. What's that? Jeff was not there, just Eddie. Oh, wow. Uh... And he's like, oh, my bass player skateboards. And I was like, great. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was whatever. It was funny. I would love to see that video, actually. I've never seen anything. I was like, all right. Is, you got the chat cut. Let's go. Um oh. Let me see what. Oh, the 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 best, the, not the best, but another funny one was we were in. Uh, I was in New York doing something, and uh, Friedman was shooting some photos of Pearl Jam, and I actually I think I'd met Jeff, and we'd become friends. And he's an awesome guy. I mean, I'm sure they're all awesome, but I just know Jeff. But Same. we're sitting there, and uh, Friedman says, "Oh, they're going on the uh, Letterman show tonight. They're playing the Letterman show tonight, and if you want to go." They'll put you, uh, Jeff said he'll put you on on some guest list thing. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And uh, I'm with my friend and we we're hanging out and we're a little bit stoned or whatever. And uh, I'm like, you want to go see Pearl Jam play at Letterman show? And he's like, no, nah, not really. I don't know about that. That just sounds like, well, too, way too much. And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. You're right. Sitting around a little more, all of a sudden I'm like, yo, let's just go. It'd be kind of funny to go and check it out. I've never seen anything like that. So we go there and we pull up in the back thing, and uh, there's all these people like in the back waiting to get a glimpse of the band or a glimpse of Paul Newman, who happens to be on the show. And uh, next thing you know, we pull up and we have our, 
our sunglasses on in there, and I see the guy Schmitty, their road manager guy, who's a super nice guy. I mean, Pearl Jam, all, they're all super great, mm. um, covering the bases. Um, <laughs> and Schmitty's like, hey, what are you doing, bro? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, just come and check out the band. And then all these people are like, you can just see them. Who is that? Who is that? Oh my God. Who is that? Who said that? that's got to be someone that what, who's, who's that coming in? To, they're playing with, they're going to jump up and play with Pearl Jam tonight. I mean, da, 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 da. it's like, oh, wow, these people are so lost. <laughs> we go in, we go upstairs. I see Friedman. I see Jeff. I'm like, what's going on? Da, 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 da. And uh, I'm like, well, this is cool. Like, can we go down and get our seats? And uh, Jeff is like, oh, uh, there's no seats. You can just watch. You can watch us perform on the monitors. And I'm like, what? I don't fucking sit in the dressing room and watch you on the monitors. I came down to check out the Letterman show, which at the same time I don't like anyway. <laughs> and, um, and he's like, no, no, there's no seats. And I was like, oh, that's lame. And my friend's just like, yo, let's get out of here. <laughs> so all of a sudden this chick comes by and she's like, oh, hi, I'm, I'm Cynthia Newman or whatever. I'm the music supervisor for the Letterman show. And I'm like, oh, it's fucking great to meet you. I'm just thinking every morning when I'm out living where I live in Cali, I have coffee with Morty Mortenstein, the guy who fucking is the executive producer of the Letterman show forever. I'm like, Oh, Hey there. You, you know what? I was wondering where we have seats or if there's some kind of seats. And she's like, well, you know, there's no seats for the guests. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's a drag. You know what? Let's, I'm, I'm going to call my friend Morty. And she's like, excuse me. And I'm like, yeah, Morty Mortens. And you know, Morty. And she's like, Oh uh, yeah, he's my boss. I was like, oh, yeah, I have coffee with him every day in Malibu. Uh, I'm sure he could probably work something out. She's like, okay, you know what? Just hold on a second. <laughs> and they're looking at me like, what are you doing? I was like, nothing. I'm just kind of running game. And, and she disappears. And they're like, you are insane. And I'm like, <laughs> what you coffee with this guy every morning? We talk shit and it's super funny and blah, blah, blah. She comes back and she's like, okay, come with me. And they're like, oh, wow. Where are they taking those two? Shakes us down into the green room. We go into the green room. We're sitting there. There's Paul Newman. And then there's some comedian guy. And uh, we're like, and we still have our sunglasses on because we're really stoned. And um, Paul Newman, he's, he's so cool. He's so nice. We're like, oh, hey, nice to meet you, Mr. Newman. And he's like, please call me Paul. I was like, all right, Polly, baby. And he just laughed. And all of a sudden we're sitting there. And, <laughs> and you can tell that he's like, looking he's like Who, what are you guys doing i was like oh we're here to see pearl jam and he's thinking oh these guys are going to go up live and perform with them i'm so out of touch with pop culture i don't even know who these guys are and and you just can see him thinking that and you're thinking no please not you too <laughs> then all of a sudden they take us and they take us to our seats and they're like whatever their seats and uh we're sitting there and all of a sudden they come on and I look at my friend. My friend is just like so disgusted. He's like, come on, can we please? And I was like, yeah, let's go. And we just got up and left. <laughs> and <they were> so, <laughs> <they> were, <laughs> where did those guys go? Oh, they just went. They, were, they didn't leg the seats or something. <laughs> and that's that. And that was my, that's my Pearl Jam story. But all it was right. funny. Super that's funny. Amazing. I guess you got to be there. Anyway, you want the other one? Sure. Yeah. You sure? I just went up two octaves. Yeah, no, it's another one. It's quick. It's Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I was there. I'm sitting there. They say, yeah. They say, oh, you, you guys want to go to Pearl Jam? I'll put you on the list. And they're like, yeah, sure. Okay. Possibly, whatever. And they're like, oh, you're, just, you're on the list no matter what. You get, uh, I'm with Dante Ross again. And then. I'm like, you want to go see Pearl Jam? He's like, no, not really. I was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, let's just go. It's like, yeah, it'll be fun. Let's go see those. They're super nice guys. And uh, so we roll over to Madison Square Garden. We get there. We get to the whatever the will call thing. And there's just this this uh, African American older woman that's sitting there, and and she's <laughs> so cool. And I'm like, hi. And she's like, hi, baby. I was like, uh, I think I have tickets here. And she's like, oh, okay, sugar, what's your name? I was like, Steve Olson. And she's like, okay, one second. She just files through. She looks in the O's and she's like, nope. 
And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's too bad. You want to look again? Maybe you overshot it. And she's like, oh, anything for you, sugar? <laughs> nope. I'm like, okay, guess not. Next thing you know, she says, maybe they have your tickets over there. And I'm like, okay. So we go over there. They say, no, we're closed. We don't have any tickets. Next thing you know, go back to the same woman. She's like, How's, your, how's it going? Did you get your tickets? I was like, Nope. She's like, Okay. You want me to try again? I was like, Yep. She's like, Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the kid, the, the kid comes out from uh, Band of Horses and he's a skater dude. And he's like, Oh, dude, da, 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 nice to meet you. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. God, we we're trying to get in, but I, I guess we're late. And we're, and there's no tickets and he's like oh here's a pass and i'm with dante and i'm with this other guy wyatt who's since passed away but hmm. i'm like all right let me get that pass so we go in and we just do this pass the pass like there's just old union dudes working past the pass all the way through to backstage up into the dressing rooms and these old guys are just like all right enjoy yourself it's just passing the guy the pass behind then we get there, and uh, I think you're there, farmer, and so. I was there, buddy. yeah. We had, there were multiple levels of security to get into this. Uh, each each band member had their own suite, uh-huh. yeah. right? No, and we got Jeff's suite by. I, I don't know how we did it, but we pulled it off yeah, by just passing the pass back and back, back to back to back to back, blah blah blah. So anyway, we get in there, and we go out to see. Uh, they're still. I think they're doing an encore or something at that time. And we roll out and we get. Get, just grab some seats and we start screaming Eddie <laughs> <laughs> and then also the whole audience is like oh here's some diehard Pearl Jam fans and the whole place starts screaming Eddie and we were just kind of mimicking Eddie Murphy <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it was super funny and then we get back into the dressing room again and uh, there's John McEnroe and there's some dude Brent Berry and I think I was sitting there and I was talking to someone about this the first Hester contest at Spring Valley. And I had drawn like a bunch of little circle, like keyhole diagrams and a bunch of lines on there. And like each line represented the trick that was going to be done, which was basically a front side carve, backside carve, front side grind, backside kick turn, possible push into fakie 360. Anyway, what happened? Nothing. Push carve. Did the push carve. Yeah. Hmm. I also did a one footed carve, then slid down yeah, and pushed in the fakie because I wasn't going to make it. And I was like, oh, I got to save this trick. All right, just push in the fakie. All right, good, done. New trick invented in the middle of the contest. Wait, salvage so is grinded? Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, talking shit. Not really. A little schmitty. Anyway, uh, Brent Barry's like, wow, that's fascinating. I just look at him, and then McEnroe looks at me and he's like, I think he's gay. <laughs> I'm not sure. I really couldn't care less. That's my sec- That's my final Pearl Jam story. Oh, that's a good one. That was a big night. Yeah. Damn, it was way more backstage fun. at Emmett it was Madison. Way, it was way more fun. What? Backstage. We there so long. I, I could. We couldn't figure. Out, it was like Spinal Tap. <clears throat> we we're leaving. I couldn't figure out how to get out. <clears throat> everyone was. Everyone was gone, and we were just yeah. walking through the catacombs under there, trying to figure out how the fuck to get out. It took us. <laughs> like, forever to figure out how to get out that was insane that was super funny who who parties better new yorkers or la i mean that depends on who you're with well i mean isn't new york never closes you know it seemed to close every time i was there at 10 well farmer left la for a reason yeah (laughs) met a beautiful woman (laughs) <laughs> indeed no i mean come on new york is new york la is la i don't know i don't even party anymore what do you mean martel let me get a beer what? <laughs> i could use a fucking um, beer too what do you got tony mm. yeah tony tony got nothing tony's like tony's got one thing on his mind i'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to watch the, the liverpool match Oh God! It's still oh, zero right. zero. I it promise. Is. Yeah, it's nil nil. <laughs> it is. It's still nil nil. We're, right. We're forty minutes in. Nil nil. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, and is it intercontinental? Uh, they're yeah, they're over. In, they're in the they're in the Netherlands right now. Who do you got for That's World Cup? Oh, I'm back in Canada. <laughs> oh, 
Really? Oh, yeah. You're nuts, dude. <laughs> what are you back in Canada? I'm just asking. Well, I married a Canadian. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. Have you pre- you've recently gotten married? Yep. Oh, like what? A month ago? Two months. Two months. Two months. Two- August oh, thirteenth. Cool. Yeah. That's the exact. Leo wow. wedding. Hmm. Yeah. I suppose. Leo. Leo wedding. What do you mean you suppose? You know astrology. Well, I, when it comes to birth dates, I think in, in those terms, I don't really think of them as, as how the star sign sits on my on my nuptials. But that's interesting take on. What do you mean? That, you're right. What? You're right. I sit I'm, correct. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just asking. It couldn't Anything work goes with me, man. You know. <laughs> You know that. Okay, easy, easy, <laughs> easy guy. The easiest guy I know. You know, right. let's just talk about, let's talk something really good. That yeah. pool in Seal Beach that you mm. guys skated that one time a while ago. Oh, yeah, that little tight little kidney. Oh, my God. That front side grind is one of the best fucking video sequences I've ever seen of a front side grind. And I got to give it up. I was like, whoa, he's going down. And then all of a sudden the board just comes underneath you and you pull it. <laughs> I, was, like, I, I was more surprised oh, yeah. than anyone. Trust me. Yeah. I know, but it was insane. I was like, wow, he is not going to make this. And not like you don't have skills, but it was just yeah. just position. Look at this guy. What would yeah. you do in this situation? <laughs> uh, fucking run, man. Run for your life. What about uh what about fucking young guns? Yes. What do you mean? There's so many good kids, it's crazy. No. The movie. <laughs> oh. What about young guns? Fuck young guns. <laughs> Are those lanes in a in a western? It's a good movie. Or I thought it was when I was a kid at least. Well, yeah, but now you're grown up and you can see it was a piece of shit. Yeah, I actually came out at the bar the other night. I was laughing pretty hard at it. So, Young Guns versus Thrashing. Oh, that's good. Two shitty fucking movies. Never <laughs> worth making. Even though Thrashing is kind of fun. That was one of the highlights of your life, no? With Thrashing? Yeah. I mean, uh, I had fucking a lot of highlights, but that was super fun. That was amazing. Right. I mean, yeah, people are like, oh, you're making a movie, big deal. Go fuck yourself. It's like, yeah, we're just having fun. Were uh, you surprised at where the daggers went from there? I mean, some fictitious uh, gang that was made up by Alan Sachs for the screenplay? Yeah. Yeah, no, dagger for life, babe. <laughs> I do have funny stories, though, of thrashing. I probably shared I, them I, was, I bet you do. Yeah, well, one time at band camp or at thrasher camp I, camp. I know they had they had uh they had hired me to help do location stuff for the, their grand finale the downhill <coughs> so we found all these places whatever anything whatever nice hills and all of that like kind of with like runoffs and all of that so the last couple of days of shooting, they're shooting the downhill, which is the grand finale, blah, 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 where Corey Webster comes and beats Hook, and then they become buddies and subplot or main plot. Anyway, so we get to the place, and it's like, you know, there's a lot of fucking guys in this big, giant grand finale downhill, and there's a bunch of jacks that had come down for it, and then there were a bunch of other dudes, and daggers, and the daggers are like a, like, like a Benetton ad. They had like Stedham, uh, Alva, Martinez, Hisoy, uh, Radigi, Argentinian. You know, it was uh, everywhere. And daggers were what the daggers were. They were funny. But I remember we scouted these locations, and all of a sudden we end up at this one, and it's just this like enormous downhill, and there's no run up. It just keeps going and going and going. I'm like, yo, what is this? And they're like, oh, this is the uh, this is the start of the race. I was like, yo, but people are going to seriously get fucked up here because they're going to be trying to beat each other and there's no runoff. Like, you guys are idiots. You guys don't know shit about skateboarding. You've been fucking assholes the whole time to us anyway. And so, I mean, I think Jesse Martinez, fuck me, he got laid out. I broke my, my, I broke my wrist. Some other guys ended up in the hospital. All this shit because it was just shitty-ass fucking... I mean... Um, it's just a sh- fucking, it was dangerous, whatever, who cares? But, uh, 
I remember I went to the hospital and I was like, oh, what the fuck? Am I going to, all the money I've been making with much, uh, am I going to have to pay for my own hospital? So I'll be, I've done this movie for free to break my wrist. And next thing you know, uh, someone's like, oh, call this, call this uh, union, Screen Actors Guild. And I was like, oh, okay. So I called Screen Actors Guild. And they're like, uh, what do you call me about? It's like, I broke my hand on this movie, Thrashing. They're like, okay, just a second, let us check. Oh, yeah, it's signatory. Yeah, do you want us to represent you? And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, uh, they're breaking all sorts of rules, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we, we're going to sue Thrash, uh, the production company, Freeze Production Company thing. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm really interested in suing them. I just want to make sure my hospital bill is paid. And they're like, well, no, you know, they, you know, how much are you getting paid? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, Oh, they're like, no, they, they're underpaying you guys. Da, 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 da. And, uh, I was like, all right. And they're like, we can get you 25 grand. And I was like, yeah. And what's your cut? And they're like, uh, there's no cut. We get just get 25 grand. And that's why we're a union. And I was like, sure handle this fuck those guys <laughs> so then i go back at the final day of the thing and and all the, the producers and all those guys are all up in arms they're like hey uh come into the trailer and i go into the trailer and i think i had a cowboy hat on i was kind of dressing up like that back then and uh halloween every day and they said look at uh, we're willing to cut you a check for three grand right now and it will cover all your hospital bills. Just drop the K drop the, the suit against us. And I was like, excuse me. Um, I think I was 20 at the time. No, 24 or something. They're like, yeah, you know, this is just adding problems to our production. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait a minute, let me just make sure 25, three from 20, 22. So you want me to just cough up 22 grand to be cool with you guys who have been assholes the whole time to us skateboarders, because we're like these humans that are worthless to you, but you're making a movie about it. Uh, I don't think so. And then one dude, some older guy was like, it's like you have a gun to our head, motherfucker. And I was like, and if I had a gun to your head, motherfucker, I would have pulled the trigger before I even fucking looked you in the eyes to make sure you're dead. <laughs> and, and he was like, what'd you say? And I was like, yeah, fuck you too. I'm not fucking dropping the suit. I'm going to fucking double it. <laughs> and they kicked me out of the trailer. <laughs> then everybody got upgraded though. We got scale instead of whatever it was, buck 50 a day. It was fucking <laughs> And I got the money. Then I moved to New York and became bicycle messenger. Uh, That's always good. I was I, I I I tried to ask that question a little earlier. Like, how did you? How did your the New York Olsen happen? Well, I like New York so much. I think I played the Joneses played New York back in '81 at like a seven at five in the morning. We played Peppermint Lounge. We played down in uh, Trenton, New Jersey, with Lord's New Church. We played all over, like out there. I don't know how, but we did some record with uh, with BIO. Someone got their head kicked in, and then we just parlayed that into doing a tour. But we played with the Blasters at the Peppermint Lounge. They're like, wow. you know, you guys want to come and open for us? And we're like, yeah, sure. And then we booked a, sh a sh you know, shows around New York and Jersey. And that was insane. But um, what was the question? I already fucking lost my mind. How, how did, oh, how did oh, you anyway, so yeah, that was 81, and New York was just going on at that point i remember going to like these party a couple of parties with this girl anzo and she had some like basement thing and there's john michelle and all these people and and he was just painting on this drywall and huh. we were like oh wow and i remember seeing her i was like yo anzo do you remember and she's like yeah we're idiots we should have cut the drywall we've been fucking dead by now for making millions i was like yeah whatever anyway uh no, after I did Thrash and I had met some girl from New York and she's like, oh, come and come live with me out in New York. And I was like, OK, I'll go to New York and uh, I'll go study acting at some acting school out there, which was insane. Which one was it? It was called Warren Robertson up off of uh, 3rd and 44th Street, I think it was. But I would skateboard to my acting class and I was into dressing the way I dressed. 
And the little woman that was my acting teacher was like, she was like, where do you come from? And I was like, I come from the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, why do you dress the way you dress? And you skateboard? And I was like, yeah, well, honey, I'm a skateboarder. What do you want? And then I was like, I need a job. And I was like, oh, all right, fuck it. I'll go and I'll make deliveries on my skateboard for a minute with the fucking the messenger bag. And I was like, this isn't making time. And uh, I got a bike and I was a bicycle messenger. And I was going to acting class. And I was like, oh, this is for the birds. These people are whack. I remember going to this one woman. She's like, oh, I need a scene partner. And she's kind of this hot chick. I was like, all right. She's like, all right, come up here to the to like Central Park West and 74th Street. And all she wanted to do was have an affair. I'm like, yo, honey, I'm here to fucking learn it, learn this acting crap. She's like, well, is it okay if I get into character? I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> she came out in the negligee. I was like, mm, I thought we were doing Death of a Salesman. <laughs> She's like, well, you know, I just feel more comfortable like this. Like, I, I'm out of here. <laughs> Should have nailed her, but whatever I did. Damn. Anyway, that's how I became a, a bicycle messenger, out of necessity. Then I got picked off by a bus on uh, Fifth Avenue, like between I don't know 59th and 54th Street. Uh, they had a, the two bus lanes, and I was racing these dudes to go back downtown. And I cut between the buses. The one bus opened its door and picked me off. Fuck. And it happens. And that's my first New York world. Wow. But that's why that's how I ended up there. But I just remember skating you square by myself, just thinking, wow, it's fucking twenty one degrees. I'm out here doing G turns <laughs> by myself. This is not that fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fun at all. Nobody skates here. Then there was like Bungie and Henderson and Bruno and Ian and Pepe. Oh, yeah. how, it's me. How, did, how did you um, meet and get to know uh, Kess? I met Kess much later, though. I didn't know Kess then. Okay. Thank God. God <laughs> ended up in prison with him. Yo, we're just going to do a little, uh, we're going to do a little job right now. What's that? Oh, we're going to go rob someone. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't, I didn't. I met Kess much later. Much, much later. Like 90s? Uh, probably late 90s, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. But Kess and I became great friends quickly. But, you know. Good dude. Good. Yeah, rest in peace, Kess. No. Look at, oh, is this going on? Can you see my logo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ruka. All right. Just trying to get on their flow program. Okay. I know some people that know people. Negative. <laughs> Drop coming. Um, what else? New York was good, though. But I got a good picture, luckily, with this guy, Christian Lapinto, down at the Brooklyn Banks. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, no, luckily. But, I mean, he was like, oh, let's go shoot some pictures, skating. I was like, all right, let's go. Shot a roll of film. I remember going over and seeing his contact sheet. The whole thing was either just blown out or totally underexposed except for two frames. The one happened to be the one. <laughs> I was like, well, that's a good fucking ratio. Wow. 24 frames. You got two pictures. You need to check your light metering, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> did that did that run as a, a Santa Cruz ad? No. Or that was later? I think that, yeah, that was much later. Yeah. No, that was in the like 80s, 80, mid 80s. Yeah. <laughs> But then again, nobody was skating the banks. It's like, yo, I love skating alone. Not. Mm. Like, skate with my friends. That's what it's all about for me. It, it, it is more fun, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's fun to go and skate, but I like to skate with my friends. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. since you're at Arto's, maybe we can wrap it up with the Arto fucking the cover, the doubles at his backyard. Excuse me? You and Lance? No, in I've been signed to non disclosure. Oh, you're not at Artos. I am at Artos. <laughs> I can't talk about that cover. Oh, you can't? Okay, come on, Smitty. Of course, it can. 
<laughs> no, Lance and I, we were skating a lot and we were like, oh, we should do a Red Baron thing. Blah, blah, blah. Because his, his dad was English and I'm not German. But uh, yeah, so we'd been talking about it for years, years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, Arto, we were talking to Arto and he was like, oh, I can shoot that. So we shot it at his house and it turned out kind of cool. But I mean, mm-hmm. what's cool about that photo f- to me is uh, everything was done in camera. There's no like photoshopping of anything. Like mm-hmm. the plane floating in, in the foreground is hanging by like fishing line. It was a little plane. The backdrop was painted back there with planes dog fighting. And then did he hire some people to come by to do like uh, the fire and all that? Like, no, we just like poured gas on the coping. And you just like, did it yourselves. Yeah. Did, did Lance there's... make Did Lance make the model? Because I know he's he's a really talented modeler. Uh, he did the one model, and then this other guy Tate's did the backdrop. Him and oh, Lance. Tate. Like, yeah, I know Tate. Yeah. Yeah, Tate's fucking talented. So yeah. they did a twelve by twelve backdrop, and then we shot it, and it was done. It was good. I don't know, but I have to say my favorite thing one of the my favorite things in skateboarding was doing a cover with my kid right yeah i don't know i I was just like oh wow that is so wild just to be skateboarding with my kid and then all of a sudden it happens to end up on the cover as a highlight yeah that's but it was amazing doing it with him he's like yo this is how you two doubles i was like okay whatever (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you drop in over there and I'll drop in here. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was like, all right, go do whatever you got to do. Or make sure I'm in the right position. What is it? Is, was that Supreme? Yeah. Yeah, it was Supreme. You know, the big fish pond. Right. And he's what? He's boneless in over you? Or is that what he's doing? Or he's doing a boneless to the left. I'm just grinding on the right. Okay. Is that the, the one B- Becker I built? Cross, I crossed no, behind. Badgett. Badgett built it. Steve Badgett. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Badgett. Badgett's a fucking master craftsman, huh? Indeed. Yeah, I just saw the new one that they, they were building. Yeah, yeah, the old uh, fully sus- record on Sunset. Yeah, fully suspended, no supports underneath. It's insane. Yeah. yeah I'll, nope. I'll see you there. I'll see you at the ping pong table, bitch. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's- oh, down, son. Ultima, this, he's, he's not bad at table tennis, this guy. Really? Uh, I just. I just play to my uh, opponent's abilities. Yeah. Yeah. If it's so, somebody weak, you're kind of like soft. If they're fucking good, you're fat, you're harder. No, if they're weak, I play left-handed. And then they okay. think left-handed. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my trick too. I'm I think totally, Steve and I started playing each other left-handed and we had to go. I'm, all right. I'm 100% left-handed. Uh, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I just, right-handed and they go play right-handed i was like ah, i can play left-handed better anyway uh, if we're gonna yeah. dig a song out to put on the jukebox to take us out of here what, what do you go with uh at this present time yeah uh i would take uh, don't with- say kanye i know you want to say kanye don't say it <laughs> oh yeah no i was gonna say i wanted to go out with uh puta puta that's uh, African song. Okay. I'll send it to you. Sick. Yeah. Okay. But you have to learn the dance, Smitty. Okay. Yeah. Almost. Just shake your booty. It's Macarena, but reverse. Whatever. It's way cooler, yeah. Matt. Thank you, man. I really appreciate this. It means a lot. What? I'm saying thank you. Appreciate no, it. No, I'll text you my Venmo, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The invoice is in the mail. Just kidding. You know, this is one serious group I'm working with here today. Well, uh, you right. know, okay. tell, Arto, tell Arto he's next. Okay, for sure. <laughs> Same bad time tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Thanks, man. I appreciate Bye. it. Enjoy Have Hawaii. Fun. I shall. Have a okay. blast. Guys. Thanks I'm going to so go watch some more soccer. Okay, good luck. Nil, nil. Still nil, nil. The best thing in soccer is when they get the penalty kicks. <laughs> Live. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. 
When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at TalkingSchmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.